My real name is Renee Paquette. Welcome to Hey EW, I am RJ City, and my guest is Will Ospreay. Hey. Hello. This whole rub thing. Okay, that's where we're going. I don't really get it. Neither do I. You said something, you decided to one another, didn't you? Hello, bruv. What's going on, bruv? But is it like brother? Like every time you want to say brother, you replace uh, it with bruv? Kind of, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the aspect that I got from it. That's what I understood from it. So it's like, just, but it's just how geezers talk around my local area, isn't yeah. it? Like, that's how people talk to one another. To, down the pub, you just say, hello, bruv, you good? So, right. You know I mean? So, like, oh, bruv, can you spare a dime? Or, or bruv, where, where art thou? Or maybe, that doesn't work for me, bruv. Well, uh, huh? that doesn't work for me, bruv. I, okay. So oh, th that doesn't work for me, brother. Very oh, nice. I get you. And if bruv is the male, what is the female equivalent? We haven't thought about that far. Oh, okay. We haven't thought that far in advance. May I suggest sis? Nah. Okay, fair enough. Nah, <coughs> we like can it. we can move on here. That's fine. Am, am I am I bruv to you? Do yeah, we start bruv. at bruv? Yeah, we start at bruv. This is good. We're bruvs. It goes to like bruv, uh -huh. mate, uh -huh. slag, slag. That's the other one. Mate. Okay, yeah. I had a list. I wanted you to define these. Can you tell me about slag? Slag. Yeah, to someone that. Gets, gets around, isn't it? Oh, okay. You're a slag. He's a slag. You're a slag. I had my uh, days. What about twat? Twat? Uh, just someone's being a twat. Uh, uh, yeah, fair you're enough. Like, you're you you're like, uh, the loose de definition is just like someone that's just, just being a knobhead, being someone uh -huh. that's just, you, you can't you, deal with them. You've defined it with another deal, word I yeah, don't understand. You, you can't deal with them. They're, they're not, uh, uh, flipping hell. Yeah, flipping hell. Hey, can you tell me about Cheeky Nando's? All right, so Cheeky Nando's is where you're, you're feeling something real hungry. You're, you're hungry for something, yeah. right? But you don't want fast food because fast food, it ain't good for you. But you yeah. don't want to go fine dining. Right. Fine dining's too much. That's where, bam, Cheeky Nando's comes in. Nando's is one of the best Portuguese restaurants that you could ever have in the country. Yeah. You go there, Lovely little chicken breast, some peri chips on the side, mm. some creamy mash if you fancy okay, it. Okay, we're not but sponsored must, by them. You but you to... must always get a Paranese with you. If you don't get Paranese with your cheeky Nando's, then I don't know who you are as a man. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I don't either. Uh, you know? Right. We're all questioning each other. Will Ospreay is your actual real name. Yeah, yeah. Isn't William, that William Peter Charles Ospreay is the real name. You were born with a wrestling name. Yes. Well, you say that, yeah. I mean, it's spelled differently. They, they put yeah. an A. They put, there's not meant to be an A in it. Yeah, but nobody in wrestling spells things correctly, so it's perfect. Oh, well, I can't spell full stop, bruv, so there we go. See? What else would you have possibly been with this name? What, what do you mean? Like, what else could I have been yeah. in, in, like, just the real in world? Life. In yes, world? Well, the I, real I, world. I was a mastic man. I was uh, the, you know, the geezer that put, like, you know the rubbish seals around your bathrooms and your windows? Caulking. We call it caulking. Oh, I was a mastic man. Or oh. sealant a pyre was the, was the correct name for it. But, yeah, I was on the jobs doing that. And you oh, we're good at it. <laughs> so there's plenty of people who have mold in their bathtubs and they go, Will plenty, Ospreay? Plenty, yeah. That's... Up and down the country, there's some p in Maidstone going, who done this? What a right slag. Am yeah. I using that correctly? Yep, right. Okay, good. Dirty slag. You're from Essex. Yes. Explain it. This is a county in, uh, in, in England. Mm -hmm. uh, Kind of on the east side of things. Mm -hmm. Got a lovely beach, south end. So in, in the US, what city would it be like? Now, I don't know anything about America. Okay, great. I have no idea about America. You I don't know your politics. I don't understand it. You don't need to. You still live there, even though yeah, you work here. Yeah, I still here. live here, yeah. See? I prefer it. If you took this business seriously, I don't. you would move to Orlando. All because the great wrestlers live in Orlando. No, they don't know. That's the thing. That's a lie. That's a lie, because I'm not there. You're missing out. I'm does not, does Essex I, have rampant humidity? No. Does it have a Bible-themed amusement park? No. Does it have uh, dubious bumper stickers? No. Does it have uh, swampland being destroyed by capitalism? No. Nah. Can you run into Bushwhacker Luke there? No. Nah. Completely missing out. You nah, gotta move nah, I don't think I am. It's That's a really nice bit. time. Oh. You were trained at London's School of Lucha Libre. Yes. Why support appropriation? Huh? You wanted lucha. Mexico. I'm never going to Mexico. Okay, but like that's no, like a no, guy never. in Tijuana yeah. opening up a school for British strong style. Isn't that a little suspicious? No, but like, I, I wouldn't mind if there was like someone that opened up like a, an English breakfast in Mexico because like, we have the best breakfasts ever. There right. should be breakfast everywhere. Yeah. In the world, English breakfasts. I everywhere. think there is breakfast everywhere. No, but not in Japan. Oh, mate, it's so hard to find breakfast in Japan. Mm. I've spent so many times in Nagoya trying to find breakfast in Japan. 
can't find it. Like up and down the country. Everything just opens at 11 a.m. in Japan. Mm. There's so little breakfast places in Japan. It really does my nothing. Uh, yeah, my, my nuts have been done in for years. You debuted under a mask as Dark Britannico. Yes. Is that a political thing? Not a political thing. It was just the evil twin to the hero, which was Leon Britannico, uh -huh. who was like the, the British lion, right. the, the good guy, the, the Spider-Man, and I was the venom to the Spider-Man. And do you feel like Britain is in a dark period right now? Oh, yeah, we're always in a bloody dark period. The what NH do they need to do to lighten it up? Well, I think just legalised marijuana would be the best thing to do. It's I mean, and then very you, just, you tax that mm -hmm. because people will pay for it. Yeah tax it and then give it to the NHS nurses because they're being sorely and I feel so bad because I love the NHS. The NHS health system is, it saved me nan, it saved me dad, it's, it's an incredible place and I feel like they're just being fun to constantly. So I feel like if you just legalise marijuana like you guys done over here in Canada and America and then just tax it because I just feel like the amount of petty, fit, like petty crimes that are going on that doesn't need to be happening. Yeah. What, a, what a campaign speech that was. I can't yeah, wait till you run for a like, I'm not good at politics. Is it true that Tony Storm has a tattoo of your dog? Yeah, mate. Do you have a tattoo of your dog? Nah. I've only just started getting tattoos. Why does she have a tattoo of your dog? And you? Why, what special bond did she have with your dog? Well, her, Juice, Jamie Hayter, and my partner at the time, Bees, we all lived in my house during the pandemic and I just had a, a form. I've got two dogs, that's the fu funny bit. Norbert's been left off. She's got Hagrid. So uh, I guess they had like a little bit of a bond with Hagrid. I wonder if yeah. that... <laughs> but Tony had a special bonding. I guess you didn't, right? No, no, I have a wonderful bond with my fat pups. You don't have a tattoo of the dog. One day I will, but mm. like, I just don't think right now is... Like, I, I don't know where to put it either. You know what happened? That. What? You got dog cucked. Hey, that, uh, <laughs> that Dave guy really loves you. Meltzer. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what it is. I think I'm just a charming man. Do you think you're as good as he thinks you are? Uh, no, because like when you when you talk about guys like Kurt Angle and he hasn't got one five star yeah. match, I, I'm nowhere near the level of what Kurt Angle is. But like, but I do feel like I, I've got my own special, unique like stuff that Kurt Angle could never do. Yeah, I could do, but stuff that I could never do, Kurt Angle could do. I think it's just I think it's just his opinion. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, think, uh, opinions are like, oh, everyone's got one. Mm, there's some people who don't. They gotta be eliminated through a stomach. It's a whole thing. A <laughs> no, I don't believe that. Until you show me proof that there is no, <laughs> that there's someone out there without a I don't believe it. That's a wonderful quote. Um, let's turn the critics' gaze around. What would you rate Dave Meltzer? On what, though? On this, how nice Being he a is? critic. Just being a critic? Yeah. Um, let's, let's go. Let's go four. Mm. I'll, I'll give him a four. Mm, 3.25. He's got a lot of run on sentences. You've said that you are the greatest wrestler pound for pound mm -hmm. in weight or in money? Both now. <laughs> <laughs> I did Congrats it, Mom. to you. You know, I'm Canadian, you're British. I'm a little disappointed you didn't use the metric system. I'm the best wrestler kilogram for kilogram. I thought that would have sounded better. Pound for pound sounds better, though. Kilo mm. for kilo. Oh, no, kilo mm. for kilo does sound good, actually. Change I'll it start up. Doing it. I'll start doing it. You've, so you're like... if, like, Mark Henry has more pounds than you, is he better overall? I mean, strength-wise, you could argue it, but then, like... I guess until I reach Mark Henry's size, we'll never know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of reaching, reaching Mark Henry's size, you have put on a lot of mass. Yes. You've incorporated more of a heavyweight style. Barely. How are the <laughs> You referred to yourself as Billy Goat. Yeah, and I thought that stood for greatest of all time until I stumbled upon a tweet from December 2nd, 2018. When I was eight, I headbutted a goat <laughs> because he stole my grape. Please elaborate. Can I please call my mum? She explains yes. this so yes. well. <laughs> Let me see. Do you call your mother while you're taking <laughs> too? No, nah, not my mum. Okay. Hang Thank on. God. <laughs> my mum explains this so good. We'll, we'll give him. We'll give him time. He's, you're spending a lot of money on this, and I appreciate it. Uh, I get you. She'll pick up your shirt. Sure, well, I mean, it's eight. 5 p.m. over in England, and she does nothing on a Wednesday. Uh, right, but explain her Mom. son's goat headbutting tendency. Yeah, come on, Isadon. Come right. on, Mom. What's your name? Carol? Sue. Sue. Yeah. I could have guessed. Same as Trent's mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, go on. Don't do Pack it. Don't Sue's. do it. Oh, this is, you know. No, she's, she's not going to do it.
No, the mother I'm so disowning sorry. her son in real time. Yeah, so basically what happened when I was eight years old, my mum would go get her fruits from like this, not like a farm, it was a farm, but it wasn't really a farm. We'd go and get our fruit and vegetables yeah. over there and I had this big pack of grapes and she was chatting away to, mm. and she'd love to chat, so do I really. And I was eating these grapes and I was just stroking this goat, right? And I had this grape in my hand. Pet petting it, you were yeah, petting like, it. Yeah, <laughs> like stroking, stroking a goat. Mm. What's stroking? Later I'll stroke you and you'll understand the difference. No, it's keep going, something. keep going with the goat. But then this goat lunged towards my <laughs> hand, right, and grabbed my grape, and I snatched him by the horns, eh? So we're in a tug of war, uh -huh. and then I was like, give me my grape. I didn't swear at the time, sure. but I was like, give me my grape. And my hand down the goat's mouth, so I was trying to get the grape. And I was like, nose to nose with it, and then I went, give it, I started headbutting the goat, so like, and it like, let go. <laughs> So then my mum, like, obviously see there was a commotion coming. She's like, I'm running. And I was like, I've got the grape. And I put the thing in my mouth. She went, don't put the thing in your grape. And smack the grape out of my hand. The goat's laying on the floor because it doesn't realise what the just happens. Right. And like, so technically I knocked out a goat. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I have no follow-ups for that story. Uh, my mum tells it so much better, man. Yeah, like, I'm, tells that's it. a shame. I'm well, so man, sorry. I'm looking forward my, to interviewing her. Let me put my phone on Don't Disturb Mode because she's probably going to be like, is everything all right? You have a move called the Storm Driver 93. Yes. 93 named after the year you were born. Indeed. Okay, I'm going to list some other things that happened in 1993. You tell me what move they should be. Czechoslovakia split into the Czech Republic and Slovakia. What move would that be? The Czech split. Uh, really nice. Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You becomes the longest running number one single of all time. Uh, the Whitney driver. Houston, we have a problem. Oh. Come on. <clears throat> Finally, Scientology is officially recognized as a religion. I don't know nothing about science. Cruise control. They'll get it at home. Don't worry about it. You have another move called the Hidden Blade. Yes, Assassin's Creed. Aren't you kind of telegraphing it by calling it the Hidden Blade? No, it's just a... Well, it's just, it's like yelling, I'm wearing camouflage. But I don't yell it out, do I? I just see it there and boof. My advice to you would be to rename it like the Fun Suplex. Right? Everyone oh, will be expecting a suplex. And then I just drill it. That's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I'll call it out to her, a Fun Suplex. Exactly. You're it's a fun thing to yell out. Oh, good idea. You have said that you are on the spectrum and you're proud of it. I'm yes. going to read you a quote. All of us autistic kids, we're so much better than regular normal people. Yeah, man. We can lock into and do it. To all my autism kids out there, we're top. Yeah, buddy. Are you shaming people without autism? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you not got autism? I don't have it, and now I feel bad about it. You should. You Why should. are we ascribing values? We're, no, all, we're all unique in no, our own special look, ways. Look, no, because in the school system, like, I didn't find out a lot about my... Um, I didn't find out a lot about myself until, yeah. like, after I left. Yeah. So, like, I wasn't afforded any of, like, the extra time or, like... Extra, like, there were so many things in my uh, education that I really needed help on, and I didn't get that help. And it's not just me, it's a, a wide bunch of people. So finding out all this about myself, I just want to show people that like, you know, like, yeah, I've got autism, I have ADHD as well, I'm super dyslexic, I can't read, I had to have someone read my contract out for me. So like, and it's, it's super embarrassing, man, it really is, but like, I feel like I've got to the point where I am because of all these things that, I, that make me who I am and I want to inspire people, so like, a lot of people don't take risks on people that do have like autism around my area, and like I, I would like to hope that seeing me doing this stuff, it does inspire other people. And that makes you better than me. Yes. This isn't the neurodivergence Olympics. <sighs> At the Revolution post show scrum. You know. <laughs> you made a meme face. Oh, the, I can't do it. <laughs> You've lost it. That, uh, that's no, that's that it. Is. Yes. Did you know it was a meme face while you were doing it? No, I, I don't even know what I was talking about. It's the face that I look like when I see my missus' ass. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Forbidden Door 2023. You did something very bad to the Canadian flag. Yeah. You You it. You flag. You're yeah, a flag I, You went like I, this. I, you went like this. I just got yeah. itches yeah, between yeah. my You know, I'm Canadian. It was like you were, you were me, quite frankly. Well, did you enjoy it? I had a nice time. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you apologized for it, but yeah. apologizing to Canadians is useless. What punishment do you think you should undergo to pay for your crime? Uh, I'll have, um, uh, I'll be naked and you can 
Splash all the maple syrup on me that you want. Okay, that's that's a fetish. Okay, that will make you a lot of money. Put like a like a. I'll bend over. What we did in football, yeah. right? Is uh -huh. when we used to play footy. Sure. We used to play ass. We would go like that, uh -huh. and, and then they'd kick a football at our ass. Yeah. So if you want, I'll bend over and they can hockey puck me in the ass. Okay, now you're being right. racist, quite frankly. You're being racist to the community. That's what you guys are good at. Uh, see what I mean? Thing, you're shaming me you for not having good. autism. You're shaming me for being Canadian. Not good at football. Not good at rugby. Not yeah. good at anything, you're just good at hockey. Just settle with it. Just be proud of it. Just be proud of something. Stop moaning. When you come out, people, they love to sing your name. I do love that. But they do it in this, like, soccer chant. Yeah. A spray, a spray, a spray, a spray. It's like, we got it. It's been done. I think they Has should, it? yes. I think they should change it up a little. Well, we got other football chants that we can definitely do. Let little. me lay some on you. Tell me how they make you feel. Okay. Uh, it's a wonderful night for Osprey. Osprey, Osprey, who will win? What do you think about that? Is that about from a musical or it's something? from when Billy Crystal hosted the Oscars. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, I don't watch the Oscars. Okay. No, I don't uh, uh, oh, will you still Osprey tomorrow? Oh, I like that song. Not what? bad, right? One for the kids. And finally, um, I spray, you spray, we all spray for Osprey. I don't mind that one, uh -huh. but in the same sense, I don't think it's going to work with the football environment. Mm, I think it's going to catch on. I think at Wembley, everybody's going to spray. It's going to be a fantastic Everyone's going to spray. <laughs> this interview is almost over. Am I still bruv, or have I yeah, graduated mate. to... No, you're, you're bruv. Well, you know what? You can, you can put Nando's on my cheeky. Because pound for pound... Kilo for kilo. He ain't heavy. He's my bruv. You should really get your ass checked. Uh, I need to, actually.